This video shows another example of combining functions. In this example, we have f of x equals 1 over x and g of x equals x plus 1 over 3. And we're given several combinations of the functions to find. So the first one, part a, we want to find f plus g of 2. So if I use my definition for combining functions, when I see this written f plus g of 2, that means that I'm going to take f of 2 plus g of 2. So I'll plug 2 into each of my functions separately and then add the results. So f of 2 would be 1 half, and g of 2 would be 2 plus 1 over 3. So I'm just plugging a 2 in where I see the x. And now I just want to go ahead and simplify this. So this would actually be 1 half plus 3 over 3, which gives me 1 half plus 1. Now I could rewrite the 1 as 2 over 2, and so this would give me 3 halves as my final answer. And you could also use your calculator if you needed to, to add the 1 half and the 1. Part B asks us to find f minus g of x, and using our definition for the f minus g, that would actually be f of x minus g of x. And so I take my f of x function, which is 1 over x, and I'm going to subtract my g of x function, which is x plus 1 over 3. Now, this is a valid answer. You could stop there. If you wanted to find a common denominator and combine them into a single fraction, that can sometimes be helpful. So in order to do that, what I would do is I would multiply the first fraction by the denominator of the second fraction, and I would have to multiply both the top and the bottom. So I could rewrite this as 3 over 3x. Notice that if you canceled out the 3s, you would uh, um, get the original 1 over x. And I could write the second one as x times x plus 1 over 3x. So notice, again, if I canceled out the x's, I would just end up with my x plus 1 over 3. But now my two fractions have the same denominator, so I can go ahead and combine. So this would be 3 minus, and if I distribute that x, I would get 3 minus x squared plus x all over 3x. And so as a final answer, I could write this as 3 minus x squared minus x, distributing that negative into the parentheses. So 3 minus x squared minus x all over 3x. This would also be a valid answer. And in some cases, it might actually help you to combine your two fractions but you are also welcome to just enter this first answer into your homework system. All right, part C asks us to multiply f times g of negative four. So using the definition where I multiply two functions, this would actually be f of negative four times g of negative four. So I'll plug negative four into each function and then simplify. All right, so f of negative four would be one over negative four, and g of negative four would give me negative four plus one divided by three. So now we just wanna simplify. So I end up with negative one fourth times 
negative four plus one would give me negative three over three. So that gives me negative one fourth times negative one, which would give me a positive one fourth. Notice on both part C and part A, because I was plugging in a number, my answer was a number. And in part B, because I was plugging in a variable, my answer ended up as an expression involving variables. Let's do one more where we are dividing. So we'll use the same F and G. F of X equals one over X and G of X equals X plus one over three. So same functions, but now I want to find F over G of X. So this means that I'm going to take F of X and I'm going to divide by G of X. So F of X is one over X and I'm gonna just write the division symbol here. Instead of doing it as a quotient, I'm going to do one over X divided by, and then I'll write my G of X, X plus one over three. And now looking at this, I have division of two quotients. So I'm gonna use the rule where I flip the quotient that comes after the division symbol and change to multiplication. So I'll have one over X times three over X plus one. And so I end up with three divided by X times X plus one in the denominator. So there's my F over G. And now they ask us about the domain, determine the domain. So the domain, remember when we defined division of two, um, of two functions, we said that the one you're dividing by cannot equal zero. So if you're doing F over G, you wanna restrict it so that G cannot equal zero. And then also your other restriction is both functions have to be defined for the domain. So your other restriction is to take out any values that make f of x undefined or g of x undefined or your final product, um, final quotient undefined. So we know that g of x equals zero would give us x plus one over three equals zero. And that happens when the numerator x plus one equals zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a slash through my equal sign. I'm saying g of x cannot equal zero. That tells me that x plus one over three cannot equal zero. And that happens when X plus one is not equal to zero. So one restriction is that X cannot equal negative one. Notice that that actually matches up with one of the restrictions of the three over X times X plus one. Now we look at our original functions. So F of X is undefined when the denominator is zero, so when x equals zero. So x cannot equal zero in the domain. So that will be another restriction on our domain. Um, G of X is never undefined because I'm dividing by a constant. So I don't really have to worry about where G of X 
is undefined because g of x is never undefined. And now I look at my result here. I cannot divide by zero. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, I cannot divide by zero. So that would give me x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal negative one, which is actually the same restrictions I got down here. But I do have to check just in case I ended up with something extra um, from looking at my result. Okay, so we've got our restrictions on the domain. X cannot equal negative one and X cannot equal zero. So our final answer for the domain, we want to list it in interval notation. We'll have negative infinity to negative one, and I have to use parentheses to exclude those endpoints. Don't forget the interval from negative one to zero, and then the interval from zero to infinity. So that would be my domain of f over g, but notice it wasn't just as simple as looking at the, the final result of f over g. I also had to look back at my original g of x and make sure that does not equal zero and make sure that I've accounted for all the x values that would make f or g undefined. So really what you do is you look at any restrictions in the domain of the original functions. And in this case, we had quotients. So the restrictions where you can't divide by zero. Um, and then also, you look at your finished product and any restrictions on that.